Thank you so much for joining us for the hard questions. We are seated at the judiciary today speaking to the spokesperson of the judiciary on matters concerning access to justice. Your Worship, thank you so much for joining us today and for giving us this interview. Thank you very much for having me on this program. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Your Worship, I'd like to start with a rather difficult question. Um, how is the court handling case backlog currently? Uh, case backlog is a problem, of course, which has been there for some time. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are advising means of how we can tackle it. We we are managing within the limited resources that we have. We have tried to use technology as one way of uh, trying to expedite the hearing of cases. We are using various innovations, uh, which include uh, pre-bargaining, because in pre-bargaining, a case which would have taken uh, like three years, when uh, a person uh, pleads guilty and is given his sentence there and then, the case will take like, uh, let's say, three months or four. So that one now, the case which would have been a backlog is cleared. We are also applying uh, the alternative dispute resolution methods like in mediation. Uh, a case which would have taken five years because you have to bring witnesses, some of them from far away, out of the country and the like. Right. When uh, the parties are trying to mediate, the case takes two months, so you are cutting it by over, over four, five years, mm -hmm. and therefore that one is helping you. That case which would have been a backlog is gone. Uh, so we are trying to use the, the means possible to see how we can tackle the, the backlog, but mm -hmm. it remains there. Mm -hmm. your, your Worship, the, the former Chief Justice, Bart Katurebe, um, did an annual census of, of cases with a case backlog, and yes. all these measures were put in place. Yes. Since then, the number of cases on backlog is still swelling. It, it's not reducing, despite all these other alternative dispute resolution mechanisms that you have. Uh, are you making other considerations? I, I wouldn't say that uh, since then the case uh, backlog is swelling. Yes, backlog is, case backlog is there, but uh, when we compare... If we like, uh, for example, one looked at, uh, let's say, two years back, the case backlog that we had and what we have now, there is a difference. There has been some reduction in as far as the case backlog is concerned. Even the, 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 the lifespan of cases has reduced. If the, the, the long-staying case we had that time maybe was like nine years or, or ten, when you look at the backlog that we have now, you find that some of them, most of them are like six, five, because uh, how we measure backlog is a case which is above two years. That one we call it a backlog. So when you look at the, the oldest cases we have now compared to that time, you realize that, uh, yes, case backlog is there, but has been some, some positive steps towards the tackling it. Your Worship, there's an issue that has arisen in, in trying to solve case backlog. Um, judges have been working overtime, and we've seen complaints, particularly the Uganda Law Council, from advocates saying judges are no longer writing judgments, lawyers are writing judgments for them. Doesn't this undermine the independence of the judiciary, the confidence that people have in the judiciary? Uh, of course we have had that, 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 that allegation that some uh, some lawyers are writing judgments for judges. But uh, I must honestly say that uh, us as an institution, we have not established that that is possible or it is happening. If it could be happening, it is very, very difficult to detect and uh, it is something that is happening inside doors. But uh, to be honest, as an institution, as far as we are concerned, that one, we don't know about it. Yes. Let's speak to, to the ethics of, of judges. This is something, including the Chief Justice, something the Chief Justice has complained about, yes. the corruption in the courts. How are you dealing with that? Uh, corruption, of course, remains a challenge, not only for judiciary, but uh, various institutions, and it's something that we have to, to tackle. Uh, for us as judiciary, of course, we say that it, there is no tolerance for corruption as far as our operations are concerned, and uh, we have put up measures to see that we, 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 we tackle it. 
one of uh, our measures is that uh, we are trying to, to empower our inspectorate of courts, which is supposed to oversee the, 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 the operations of our courts, to see the quality of work that is being delivered, and also look into cases of, of, of integrity. So we are, we are trying to make it grow, to become big, we are now looking at uh, having, uh, having regional offices for it because uh, apparently it has been operating from Kampara. So by the time you move from uh, one corner to another, it takes a little bit while. So if we have regional offices, they can routinely check on our courts and see uh, what is happening. And if, if there are people who have complaints, can easily, can easily access them. So that one, we hope it is one step towards the checking that. Uh, we have, uh, in most of our courts around Kampala, you realize that we have some cameras there, which are meant to see what is happening around. Because uh, if people are trying to, to do something around the court premises, let's say our staff, at least we can check and see who is doing it and how. The other one is uh, we have introduced the, uh, the electronic court information system. We hope that uh, it, is also, it is also one way of checking corruption because uh, it limits the inter interaction. Corruption has to occur when two people meet and, and negotiate and talk. So we hope that if we reduce interaction of our court staff with their court users, it will help us to combat corruption. You see, some of these uh, cases of corruption arise because of the way things go. For example, if someone would want to know when is my case coming, when, is the, when was the judgment delivered, and he has to come to court, sometimes uh, to get information, simple information takes him a while, the person may think that maybe I need to do something for me to get this. So if you have easy it for that person to access information, it means the person now can no longer think of doing anything because information is uh, is easily available. So the other one, the other method we are using is we emphasize if you move around, you find that most of our staff now put on uniforms, uh, especially the lower, the lower staff. Where they don't have uniforms, we emphasize putting on their name tags. And uh, so that a person who comes to talk to someone knows that I'm talking to so and so. Uh, we also use that to eliminate other people who have been doing some things in our names because people come and camp around courts and claim their stuff when they are not, and they extort money from people. And once that money is extorted, the person will think that court is corrupt because money has been taken out from me within the court premises. So if we emphasize the identification tags, it means that we are eliminating some of those people. So we are also trying to, to ensure that we have uh, we have adequate security around courts to, to check some of those people because we had those cases in some courts, especially around the town here, like Uganda Road, people camping there, waiting for non-suspecting court users and claim that they can see the judicial officers for them. And then they end up extorting money from them and only to disappear. When they go to the courtroom, what they had been promised is not what happens and uh, some of them break down in the courtrooms crying because he had been promised the person is going to be granted bail, but the person who took money from him is an extortionist. So when he reaches court, uh, the opposite happens, and the person is shocked to see that. So we are using all those kinds of methods to also eliminate those uh, people from uh, coming into our system and distorting our name. Your Worship, anti-corruption activists have been insisting judges should, one, declare their wealth, um, allow for the IGG to pry around also and, and, and find if there are any cases. It would quicken the process of anti-corruption investigations. But people in the judiciary have resisted this move saying it would eat away at the independence of the judiciary. I think that, that is not correct. Uh, all our judicial officers declare. They declare their wills within the, the prescribed time, which is two years. Personally, I do declare every two years. 
and uh, that applies to all other judicial officers, except the, uh, the lower cadres, the, the, the clerks and what, because the declaration, there is a level where it starts, the certain level of, uh, of appointment where it starts. So, but judges, all judges do declare their wealth after every two years. That applies to other judicial officers. So that one happens. So I, th I think, I think uh, the IGG office knows who owns what. They are aware of what we own. Your Worship, I want us to talk about the electronic management, case management system. It was a very expensive system to procure and install for the ju judiciary. But across many courts outside of Kampala, many people still complain. Physical copies is still what is demanded. Even within Kampala during the COVID-19, many people say the court, despite the existing of a very expensive software, still wants physical copies. How, how do you reconcile that? Now, yes, it is true. It uh, cost us a little bit of money because the, that, the, that system, uh, the procurement was for $9 billion and uh, it is ongoing. But what we have to realize is that uh, when you introduce a system, you don't have, you, you cannot uh, roll it out fully at once. You cannot roll it out fully at once. So what has happened is that uh, that system has started in seven courts. Seven courts in Kampala, uh, including Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, Civil Division, uh, Land Division, Commercial Court. Uh, then we added on some two, some, some two magistr magistrates' courts there to study how it works in the lower courts. So it is in seven courts, but uh, we are moving step by step. Because the next we shall add on, we want to add on 19, 19 courts. Then uh, we shall see how many to add on. Because as we advance, we keep developing their capacity. Because it does not uh, just come out and you start working on the system. You have to develop their capacity. One, there is training, both for our staff and also the other users, lawyers and other people who use uh, our courts. So you have got to train them to understand how it operates. Secondly, you have got to procure hardware. You have to bring in computers, which will be used. Then uh, you must ensure that wherever it, the court it is uh, started in has internet. So with all that, we are going systematically. We, we shall get there. We hope that uh, our target is that uh, within five years, we should be in each and every court around the, around the country. People have appreciated it's a good system. Those who come from up country and use it here in town, they say, I wish it could reach our place. But uh, want to say that uh, we are moving step by step and we are going to get there. So it's not say that it, it costs a lot of money and it is not operating, it's not helping. It is helping, but we are moving step by step and we shall reach in every corner of this country. Your Worship, let's talk about the staffing. Um, the judiciary used to complain about understaffing. Over the last two years, I think you've gotten numbers of staff. You've yes. thrown magistrates, um, judges have been sworn in, both at the Supreme Court and at the lower courts. Um, this doesn't seem to have affected the manner in which cases have been handled, because when we read the annual law report, we still see that there was case backlog, even at the Supreme Court where the number of justices was increased. Um, is it now still a problem of the number of judges, really? Now, it is true. We have seen the numbers being sewn in and being put on board. But uh, what we have got to understand is uh, you have got how many vis-a-vis -vis how many you need. That's where, that's where the, the, the issue lies. Now, I will give you statistics of uh, what we need and what we have. Even as we speak today, after all those... Uh, those appointments that we have had of recent, which are very much welcome because uh, we have seen unprecedented numbers being appointed, which has not happened before. But still, it remains uh, one, one cup of water in, a, in an ocean. Now, in the Supreme Court, whereas we would need to have 20 justices there in order for us to be confident and, and operate optimally, we have, uh, we have eight. So that explains that we have a shortage of 12 justices. When it comes to 
the court of appeal, the court of appeal, the structure that was recently approved and which structure we feel we need uh, is 56 justices there. Now, at the moment, we have 15. So you can calculate the deficit is, is, is more than almost 85% deficit. When you come to, to the high court, our numbers that we need for us to be able to say, now we cannot have backlog. If it happens, you can ask us why, is 150. But uh, notwithstanding the recent uh, 16, recently we are given, we are given uh, 16 uh, judges of high court, but uh, when you add them on, you get 73. 73, when you get 150 minus 73, that is over six, around 60% deficit. So that shows you that we still have a lot uh, that we lack there. When you come to registrars, uh, the registrars, we now have uh, a total of uh, 53, but the number we need is around 90. So we have a deficit of around 40 something also there. Come to the chief magistrates, now we are moving down to those courts which are, are supposed to be close to, to, the, to, the, to the common person. Now, the chief magistrates, we also will come the numbers, unprecedented numbers that were added there because recently we had, the, I think there were 40. We received 40 chief magistrates new, but uh, which made the number 73. Now you have 73 chief magistrates, but the number you require to operate is 160. Now you can calculate the deficit also there. Uh, when it comes to the lowest grade, we have our stop at the grade one magistrate. Whereas we, we targeted that if we had 560 grade one magistrates, because the target we have is that in every constituency, which is the county, we have a, a magistrate grade one based in that area. That is for those areas which are rural, but of course when it comes to the city, we start reducing uh, the, the, the size of the, of, the, of, the, of the coverage because uh, the, 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 the population is very high in the town. So we have uh, 560 required, but at the moment we have 313 appointed. So we have, we have a deficit of two, over 200. Now, when you look at uh, those numbers, those numbers, when we, are looking, when we are calculating, we look at the population we have. The population we have, I think, uh, if you look at the last census we had, it could be now over, we could be over eight, eight, 48 million. So when you look at 48 million and being served by judges who are serving uh, 20 million, at that time, you will find that really they are overburdened. But your worship, the, yes. the, the president has made a comment, yes. including the Minister of Finance, that the judiciary strategy of asking for huge paychecks for judges limits just how much you, you can work within your budget. Is it possible to stay the increment of salaries so that you can expand the, the base of judges across the country? Uh, of course, yes, you can argue in that way, but. Uh, the reason why they give those, 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 those salaries, you, if you went into the explanations also, you'll find that you cannot, you cannot reduce it. There is explanation for it, why a judge should be paid well. If you compare even with other institutions, you go to Bank of Uganda, you go where, those who have those kinds of decisions they have to take uh, in order to, to maintain their integrity, there, there is a cost and that is the cost. So you, you would rather have a few judges operating with integrity than, uh, than again having so many and the whole thing is distorted. So we have to go, that's why we are also saying yes, we understand that uh, the resources may not be enough and uh, we have to go by the few numbers we have and then use them to, to do at least their best. Yosh, I think very finally, let's talk about the, the Supreme Court. Um, unprecedented uh, in the last month, for the first time in, in this country's history, a sitting Supreme Court judge sued almost the entire bench at the Supreme Court. 
for those of us in the outside looking in, say, is this alternative dispute resolution failing even within the judiciary itself? Uh, law scholars had tried to mediate this matter and failed. Committees had been put in place and failed. Is there a problem put in the land? Uh, wh what I have to comment on that, of course, it is subjudice because now that it is before court, uh, we cannot go into its merits and all that and uh, discuss it. But uh, one, uh, it is a constitutional right for anyone, including the Chief Justice, if he's wronged he can go to court. It is open. There is nowhere it is stated that a, a chief justice or a judge or, or justice cannot sue anyone in court. Uh, like you have said, of course, it uh, looks a little bit uh, peculiar for, for suing, for the, for, the, for the judges to each other, but it has happened. And uh, the issue of mediation, I wouldn't say that it has failed because uh, it's hardly a month when this case was filed. And uh, there, there are various uh, options that have been suggested. And uh, I think given time, it may work out. Can't rule it out. It is possible that it will work out and we may see a mediation that is successful. And if it is doesn't, then we shall see how it moves. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's a matter of subjudice. Yeah. That aside, in May, the, 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 the Chief Justice stopped the city from the Supreme Court because of the issue that happened with the building there. A lot of advocates had matters uh, waiting at the Supreme Court. Those mm. matters have since stalled. Um, what's the redress for them? This is, this is the highest court in the world. Uh, I, uh, I think it's not, it's not true that the Chief Justice stopped the operation of the court. He, one, they only relocated the operation, a operation press. They were supposed to be, they have been operating in Kororo. That is the building which they have been operating in. And uh, due to various reasons, they couldn't continue operating there. So for SEFT, the Chief Justice felt it fit that let the operations in that building stop. The alternative that was given is that uh, they work from the High Court. Statistics are there of what they have, what they have done between the time they relocated from uh, the, the Supreme Court to the High Court building. Of course, the, the High Court building uh, is, has limited space, and they, can, they may not operate the way they were operating in Kororo because of the space. But uh, they are working, so cases are moving mm -hmm. on. You may not be at the rate at which. It was supposed to be. There, there were cases which were scheduled at the Supreme Court for judgment. There mm. were cases, what we're seeing, what you say is working, is really pre-trial, which is just to agree on the issues before the court. We aren't seeing judges actually sitting and considering matters before them, or even taking in arguments from the advocates and, and, and writing them judgments. We haven't seen that happen. I want, to, I want to let you know that judgments and rulings have been delivered. That's the, the statistics I was talking about. The judgments which have been delivered during this time, the rulings which have been delivered during this time, they are evidently there. They are there. You see, the way the, 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 the Supreme Court works, it's, a, it's an appellate court. So in an appellate court, you don't require to bring a witness. You, 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 can, you can actually conclude the case without appealing, because they will give you a schedule and say, okay, you are complaining and appealing against this point. Can you give us your arguments in writing, what you are arguing? The person puts the, the arguments in writing, and the, the, the court will fix a day for ruling or judgment. And uh, nowadays, most of these judgments are not even delivered physically. We retain the, 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 we retain the the email addresses of the, of the lawyers, and the same are emailed to them. So the ruling will still be emailed to you, and the, the, the judges will, will only need to have how to come together and agree on what is, the, what is the position, and then they send you a rulings. So this has been happening. There are judgments, there are rulings which have been delivered, but uh, of course, true, there are some cases which would have required them to sit physically all of them as a, as a quorum, which they may not be doing now. So that has reduced on the, on the, on the output 
that they would have had, but uh, they are working and they are delivering judgments and rulings. And uh, we are working around the corner to have that sorted out. Uh, I think uh, that may, may be there up to maybe end of December, but uh, I, want to, I, want, I want to confirm that and assure Ugandans that uh, come January, the Supreme Court should be operating normally because we are advising means of how it can get back to normal. You, you set an ambitious uh, trend to have the High Court building ready for use by December. Um, is that something that you're going to be able to achieve? Actually, the building we are talking about, it is the building for that court, Supreme Court. Because the, the two buildings that we are, we, are, we, are, we are working on at the State Square, one tower is for court of appeal, and another tower is for, for Supreme Court. You realize that uh, those courts have uh, many justices. They have many justices. So when you have to put up chambers and put up courtrooms because they work in quorum, you will find that uh, a court of appeal requires like three quorum to sit. Those are three courtrooms. So all those buildings are devoted to courts. Supreme Court, court of appeal. Now, the one which we hope to be ready by December is the one of the Supreme Court. And that's why I'm very opt optimistic that uh, come January they should be able to operate normally because they will have a permanent, a permanent home. And we are proud to have a permanent home. We can't do anything on the building because it's ours. The one that we had in Kororo was being rented from someone. And sometimes you tell the person, do this, do this, he's taking, he's, he's taking it not seriously and, uh, and, and it is clogging down our work. So we are proud to go to our permanent home, which is at the State Square. For the, for the highest court in this land. Uh, Your Worship, uh, very finally, for someone that's watching us, you know, um, we've talked about issues of case backlog, we've talked about the independence of the judiciary, the, the staffing. What words of confidence do you give them that, you know, this judiciary is strong, it's independent, it can handle matters, it can deliver rulings, and those rulings and orders can be respected? Uh, what I have to say is that, yes, this is judiciary, and the judiciary is for Ugandans. It's for, it's, it's for us. It's us who take their cases, and it's us who want our cases to be, to be resolved. So we need to put our, 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 our support to judiciary to see that it operates well. And uh, I want to assure Ugandans that as we are seated even here, various cases are being handled. When you look at the cases which come into the system annually, because an average of around 150,000 cases that are in. But uh, as at the moment, we are talking of backlog, fine, but the backlog we have is 19,000. So the question that happens, that can be asked is where does, where, where, where do the 130 something thousand go? It means the, those cases are being uh, resolved by our courts. So our courts are working despite the challenges that we have, uh, which challenges as an institution we are also working hard to ensure that we, we overcome them and serve Ugandans very well. We would want to see a lowering the lifespan of a case backlog to six months so that when we say a case has stayed for six months, it's backlog. And that is when Ugandans will feel that they are getting the full justice that they deserve. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Yoshi.